Okay, so Sapphire, we were just at the Ministry of Health today. We're here in Costa Rica. We've got a group of healthcare professionals f here studying medical Spanish for anywhere from three weeks to five weeks. And today we had our visit with, our regularly planned visit with the Ministry of Health, the government body that oversees all of uh, health care and other uh, I guess health risks here in the country mm -hmm. and we had a chance to talk with Dr. Alejandra about Zika. Exactly. So I think we took advantage of the the meeting this morning since we were there already and, and everybody's been talking about Zika. It's been on television in the United States. It's been on television here in Costa Rica and people are really worried about it and rightfully so. And so we took advantage of the opportunity we had this morning at the Ministry of Health to go ahead and get the inside scoop on what is going on with Zika in Costa Rica specifically and what that means for us traveling coming here wanting to come here in the future and and what kind of precautions we need to take or if there are any that we should take yeah absolutely and so we've got some video of our conversation with dr alejandra at the ministry of health and a couple of the things that stood out to me were um that uh for zika i mean yes there's a legitimate concern for uh pregnant women mm -hmm. and secondly that as a as a group of healthcare professionals, their biggest concern is still other things like dengue and uh, chikungunya and some other uh, mosquito-borne illnesses, which um, they have had multiple campaigns over the last five to seven years about eliminating places where mosquitoes can breed breeding grounds and things like that and so it was it was an interesting conversation definitely and you know one thing that she did mention that i th thought stood out is zika comes from this the same mosquito that has always been around it's not a special mosquito um and they're still worried about things like rory said dengue and dengue uh you know they they've been taking precautions against dengue which are the same precautions that she suggested for zika um, she even mentioned that some of the symptoms of Zika are less um, strong uh, in comparison to dengue. And, and you know, den dengue does have that other part of if you get it a second time, there's a possibility of mortality, mm -hmm. um, which, which Zika doesn't have. And so they still consider other um, sicknesses or, or diseases to be more... more um, more dangerous more dangerous yeah, yeah. And, and but the precautions are the same and they've been doing the same things and so she had a couple of interesting things to say yeah. and so to date there's no um there's no spread of zika in costa rica nor in nicaragua right. uh there have been some people who are infected who've come from outside the country and are here uh, but there's still no um, infections that have been spread from here in Costa Rica. Exactly. Uh, so anyway, let's jump in and see what she had to say. Eh, usar repelente, tratar de, digamos, si sabemos que hay un brote de, de zika, por ejemplo, en la zona sur, o sea, ¿para qué vamos a ir a pasear a la zona sur? <ríe> Idealmente prevenir, todo eso es prevención, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, ¿qué sería? Las medidas básicas, igual que con dengue, igual. Y, y nosotros, digamos, como Estado, desde que empezó todo esto del dengue, hemos hecho una campaña para que se eliminen los criaderos, o sea, todo se resolvería eliminando criaderos. Sin criaderos no hay mosquitos, ¿verdad? Hay campañas de fumigación, no hay... hay fumigación sí, que claro. está pasando, sí. Ajá. Claro, no, aquí hay mucho control. El Ministerio de Salud es el que se encarga de eso en el nivel local, uh -huh. lo que es la fumigación. La fumigación es para eso, para los criaderos naturales, digamos, se supondría. <risa> una, una pregunta. ¿Qué, pero, ¿qué? ¿Qué tanto varía la enfermedad zika en, 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 en comparación a los síntomas? Los síntomas en comparación a la dengue, chikungunya y todo. Y es un poquillo diferente, ¿verdad? Es, la fiebre no es tan alta. Aquí le vamos a ver. Sí, la fiebre no es tan alta, el brote es un poco diferente, tiene diferente morfología que la dengue. En el dengue no siempre hay 
no siempre hay brote, ¿verdad? Eh, el problema del Zika, más que todo, no sé si escucharon, es con las embarazadas. O sea, es como más leve que el dengue en sintomatología para la persona. No tiene tantas consecuencias, o sea, el dengue es peor, en otras palabras. El problema es que se está viendo malformaciones congénitas. Pero en realidad la enfermedad zika no es tan grave como el dengue. El dengue produce muertes. Porque además del dengue, que es muy sintomático, de ahí después la consecuencia es el dengue hemorrágico si le da otra vez, ¿verdad? Y dependiendo de la cepa, pero es, es peor el dengue que el zika. Y hasta ahora no hay ningún, ninguna infección autóctona aquí. No, es solo ha habido un caso y es importado. Eso quiere decir que fue una persona que traía la enfermedad y vino aquí a Costa Rica, uh -huh. que era una persona de Colombia, aparentemente. Bueno, sí. este, generalmente, bueno, como todas sabemos, para que haya una malformación congénita de ese tipo, que es una malformación congénita de tipo neurológico, ¿en qué edades tiene que haber sido infectado para que le ocurra? A ver, ¿en qué edad? Del embarazo. El, exacto, en el primer trimestre, ¿verdad? Si ya la persona tiene un embarazo de ocho meses, no. O sea, las mismas consecuencias que todos los demás. Es cuando hay un nexo ahí con el desarrollo neurológico, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. En el primer trimestre. Okay, so that's Dr. Alejandra's and the, uh, the government position on Zika here in Costa Rica. Um, Sapphire, what stood out most to you as we were in that meeting with uh, Dr. Alejandra? Well, you know, I think it's like any new disease that comes up, people are worried and we want to know how dangerous is this for me? How does this affect my family? How does it affect how I'm traveling or if I'm sending my child abroad? Um, how does that affect their safety? And I think it just comes back to the same things, precautions that we've always taken and always advised our groups to take. That is, you know, wearing long sleeve clothing at night and around dawn and dusk. Also, um, making sure that we stock up and make sure we pack with us our our DEET and, and our bug repellent and continue to take the same precautions that we always have. Right? Is that yeah. sort of what you thought too? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's all about proper clothing when mosquitoes are most active, making sure that you're using repellent, and if you're going off into the total boonies, I mean like mosquito nets and things like that. But at the end of the day, the actual symptoms of Zika and the problems that Zika present um, are, are less severe than some other mosquito-borne illnesses, and, and at the same time, keeping in mind that for women who are pregnant, it is flatly recommended to not travel yes. uh, because of the, um, of the possible neurological problems with, uh, with the Zika virus. Exactly. So um, I, I think for me, I was put at ease a little bit mm -hmm. because just like everyone in the States, um, I'm watching the news and I'm wondering, I'm going to Costa Rica, I'm taking my children to Costa Rica, should I rethink this? Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, I'm feeling pretty good about um, the normal precautions that every common ground traveler is taking mm -hmm. are going to be the precautions that will protect against Zika as well. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Have a great trip. If you're traveling, don't let Zika hold you back. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs>